It's Thursday, June 2nd, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with the latest local news, and later in the show, a look at the front pages of our community newspapers this week. We also have a special guest later in the show, Deborah Greenwood from the Center for Family Justice, to talk about some important events this weekend. Rob Adams will have a look at your forecast and a Nutmeg Sports update, and Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history. But first, on to today's news. New York State Police say two Connecticut women and a nine-year-old girl have died after a tractor trailer slammed into a car that had run out of gas on Interstate 84 in southeastern New York. State Police Captain Brendan Casey says a 911 operator who was talking to the driver heard the crash at about 3.40 in the afternoon Wednesday in the town of Weiweyanda, 60 miles northwest of New York City. Killed were the driver, 29-year-old Jacencia Valentine of Bridgeport, her daughter, and a woman passenger whose name wasn't released. Two dogs in the car also died. Casey said Valentine's Volkswagen Passat was stopped in the right-hand driving lane with its flashers on when it was struck by a Freightliner tractor trailer driven by 52-year-old Gina Ruggiero of Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania. He was not injured in that crash. And in other news, Stratford firefighters Wednesday battled a blaze that heavily damaged an Elm Street house. The single-family home at 1661 Elm Street had significant damage to the second floor and attic. Doing It Local reports that no one was home at the time of the fire and two cats were rescued. And Shelton police arrested a local grandmother yesterday for allegedly selling prescription drugs. Police say that 74-year-old Arlene Bruno was selling her own prescription pills out of her Howe Avenue home. Shelton police and the DEA New Haven District Office Tactical Diversion Squad arrested Bruno and charged her with two counts of sale of a controlled substance and risk of injury to a minor. Bruno's son, Richard Bruno, also of Shelton, was arrested as well and charged with illegal drug possession. Bruno's 15-year-old juvenile grandson also lives at the home. The crackdown on drugs continues and Shelton police ask that anyone with information contact them at 203-924-1544. They say all calls will be kept confidential. And in other Stratford news today, three decapitated chickens were found Wednesday morning and authorities say they may have been killed as part of a ritual. News 12 reports that the chickens were found in Roosevelt Forest, not far from a picnic area in a parking lot. An officer investigating found another headless chicken that he said had candles and other items surrounding it. That incident remains under investigation. And the Ridgefield Police Department is investigating multiple commercial burglaries that happened between May 16th and June 1st. On May 16th, police responded to Danbury Road near Route 7 for a reported commercial burglary. It was determined that between Saturday, May 14th and Monday morning, multiple offices located inside that building had been entered. At the time, police are still trying to determine if anything was stolen. Then on May 25th, police responded to a Main Street business that was entered sometime during the evening or overnight hours of May 24th. In this incident, $80 was reported missing. Then on May 26, police responded to a Danbury Road business located near the Danbury town line that was entered during the overnight hours. A cash register and laptop computer were reported missing. You can get more information on those commercial burglaries at theridgefieldpress.com. And in Trumbull, a West Hempstead, New York man and a Laurelton, New York woman were arrested for using fake credit cards at a Best Buy in the Holly Lane Mall on Wednesday, May 25th. Police said that 27-year-old Kareem Harris and Tylia Sims, 20 years old, each tried to buy an iPhone inside the store using fake American Express credit cards. According to a report, a loss prevention employee at the store witnessed Sims enter and walk around aimlessly. The employee approached her and she said she was trying to locate the bathroom. However, when she returned to the store, she tried to buy a smartphone using an American Express card that didn't go through. She attempted to pay for the device with cash and asked where an ATM was before leaving the Best Buy. The store's loss prevention employee notified Trouble Police of the incident and watched her as she got out into a car in the parking lot that didn't drive away. Police said around the same time of this exchange, Harris entered the store and tried to attempt the same American Express card scheme to buy an iPhone. Trumbull police arrived on the scene and detained Sims in the car and Harris inside the store. 
Harris was found to have six fake credit cards in his possession, and the report said that Sims was also discovered to be in possession of three additional fake credit cards that were in her name. And buckle your seatbelt because the 100 deadliest days began on Memorial Day, a period when national teen crash deaths historically climb. Over the past five years, AAA Foundation of Traffic Safety Research shows more than 5,000 people were killed in vehicle crashes involving teen drivers during the period that lasts until Labor Day. And to make the roadway users aware of this situation, the AAA Foundation has released a follow-up report confirming that nearly 60% of those teen crashes involve behind-the-wheel distractions, primarily texting and social media use, that are on the rise among teen drivers. And in New Canaan, a contract has been signed for the sale of the 1735 built at the corner, sorry, 1735 house built and stands at the corner of Ferris Hill and Canoe Hill Roads, which will keep the house from being demolished, according to Tom Nisley, one of the purchasers and the property owner, Max Abel. Abel had applied for a permit to demolish the house, even though he said he would prefer to sell it, considering its historic significance. He is a developer and builder by profession, and he bought the two-acre property in 2013 for $1.25 million, presented development plans to which neighbors objected and tried but failed to sell it for $1.89 million in 2014. The town of New Canaan had issued a 90-day delay on demolition on March 2nd, and that delay was just expiring just as news of the contracted sale was released. More on that at ncadvertiser.com. We're going to throw it over to Rob Adams now for a look at the forecast. Rob? All right, Kate. Thanks and good morning, everyone. I did what I could to get you a really nice day outside. So far, so good. Mostly sunny and a high near 79. I mean, it's just beautiful outside. Humidity feels like it's somewhat low. There's a nice breeze on occasion, so go outside and enjoy this one wind out of the east at 8 to 10. Now tonight not so much. I can only do so much. Patchy fog after 1 in the morning, otherwise increasing clouds, low 58 with the wind out of the southeast from 5 to 7 becoming calm after midnight. Slight chance of showers on Friday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms after 10 tomorrow morning. Patchy fog before then, otherwise cloudy, high 77. Friday night, slight chance of, of showers and thunderstorms right around 20%. And again, more patchy fog into the overnight hours, otherwise mostly cloudy, low 60 to Saturday, more of that patchy fog, otherwise partly sunny and a high of 82, pretty nice sounding. Calm wind, sounds pretty good. To Saturday night, chance of showers mainly after 11 o'clock as we get into the overnight hours, mostly cloudy, low around 62. Sunday, showers and thunderstorms in the morning as we move into the afternoon on Sunday, high 75. Monday, more shower chances and mostly cloudy, high near 80, more of the same for Tuesday, 78 for the high but mostly sunny on Wednesday and a high near 75. Again, I only have so much control in the weather I can give you. Ridgefield, you're at 73, Greenwich at 67, Shelton right here, 71 degrees. Really nice day outside, Kate. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Donald Dang will take a look back on this day in history, and Rob has your Nutmeg Sports update coming up after this. Connecticut is coming back to hometown banking to a partner that makes small businesses feel big. Where community comes first. Where you get the know-how only neighbors can deliver. Where saving time is important too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. With the 24-month Bankwell Smart CD, you can earn 1.35% APY and raise your rate and add to your CD. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook.
Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personable staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. You're watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly one million people have watched our live sports, news, and entertainment programming since the network launched in August 2015. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. And we're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. And it's time to throw it over to Donald Ang for a look back on this day in history, June 2nd. Don. Well, Kate, would you ever describe any of the Rolling Stones as choir boys? Actually, you could, but not for a very long time. First, though, we're going to go back to 455 CE. An East German tribe, East Germanic actually, known as the Vandals under King Genseric, enters Rome and plunders the city for two weeks. Now, the Vandals get a bit of a bad rap in history. They were pushed west and south by the Huns and later established a North African kingdom which collapsed in the mid-6th century. Somewhat unfairly, their name, uh, as part of the word vandalism, lives on as a euphemism for acts of senseless destruction. 1098, the First Crusade. The, the first siege of Antioch ends as Crusader forces take the city from the Seljuk Turks. The peace didn't last very long, though. The second siege of Antioch started five days later when the Seljuk reinforcements arrived and besieged the Crusaders. To 1774, the Quartering Act enacted, allowing a governor in colonial America to house British soldiers in houses, barns, or other buildings. Though the Stamp and Tea Acts are better known today, the Quartering Act was so hated that 15 years later when Congress drafted the Bill of Rights, quartering was specifically banned by the Third Amendment right after free speech and bearing arms. The Third Amendment, by the way, the least controversial of the original ten, has never been litigated. And finally, now we go to 1953, the first international event to be televised. Here it is. That, of course, was the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, who is now the longest-serving monarch in UK history. Notable people inside Westminster Abbey on that day include a very young Prince Charles, journalist Jacqueline Bovier, who was covering the event for the Washington Times-Herald, and Keith Richards, who sang in the choir. That is your look back in history, and I am Donald Ng. All right. Thanks so much, Don. Well, getting back to a little more news today, Saturday in Stratford is expected to be full of tasty food, music, and other assorted fun along Main Street. That's because Saturday is the day of the 6th Annual Main Street Festival. Diane Pertursky, a member of the Stratford Rotary Club, which sponsors the event, said the festival will be even bigger this year. The day will feature about 120 vendors, a second music stage near Milford Bank, along with the Main Street stage off West Broad Street. Shuttle buses will be running from locations on King Street and at DeLuca Field to bring people to the festival. And that festival runs from 10 in the morning to 5 p.m., rain or shine. You can get more information at StraffordStar.com. But it's time to throw things back to Rob for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Rob? All right, Kate. Following the coronation of Donald Eng, let's climb into sports. Trumbull and Darien met at Darien High School in the second round of the Class L baseball playoffs yesterday afternoon. And we had the call right here on the HAN Network. Why don't we have a look at the highlights? First and second in the 0-1 on the way with one out. Fastball, rope to right center field. This is going to drop in for a base hit. Hitting the bag at third is O'Brien. Grabbed out in center and thrown back in. But a run will score on an RBI single by Vinny Derubius. And Trumbull takes a 1-0 lead. Waldeck a little earlier. 
He hits a fastball back to the first base side of the mound. That's going to get a run in, grabbed it second, the throw to first. It's in time there, but scoring is Waldick. Two and in the inning, this one on an RBI fielder's choice. A single ties it. Breaking ball, line drive, left center field, base hit, drops in. Here's one run. Rounding third, Mike Scott will put up the hold sign on Schofield. Grant scores. The yes, yes goes up from the first base dugout. It's a 2-1 ball game. But, but let's deal with Casey Brown first. He's 0 for 1. He swings to the right side. Derubius bobbles it, steps on the bag. They get the out. The run scores. An RBI for Brown, and we're knotted at 2 with a 1-1. That is rope to right center field and a long run and a reaching, diving try. He got it. What a catch in right center field to end the inning. Racing over Mark Schmidt to save at least a double and the inning comes to an end. The 0-1 pitch coming with one out. Lifted to left, going back on it toward the wall and it is... They are chanting home run, and it is indeed over the fence. Derubius hits it out, and it's a 5-2 ball game. The present or the past? Alex Hager and John Ruth. A deep drive goes to left, heading back. It's toward the fence, to the wall. It is gone. Cord Fox got a belt high fastball. He tattooed it to left. No cars seem to be harmed in that drive, and we've got a one run ball game at 5 4. The left hander leans in. The right handed batter twirls the bat. Here we go with the 3 2. Swinging and missing. Down goes Drake, and the ball game is over. The Trumbull Eagles have advanced to the quarterfinals. So Vinny Derubius homered and drove in three as the Trumbull Eagles jumped out to a 5-2 lead and held on for the 5-4 win. Joe Nemchek held on for the win, in fact, pitching a complete game and allowing three earned runs. The Wave had the tying run on base to start the seventh before Nemchek shut the door on the comeback bid. The Eagles will next play Simsbury, who eliminated Fairfield Ludlow 1-0 in nine innings as we look at the rest of the baseball scoreboard. From the second round of Class Double L, as we told you, Trumbull over Darien 5-4. It was Ward shutting down Hall 4 0. Glenn O'Brien pitched a three hitter. Wilton beat NFA 3 2. Amity 5, Danbury nothing. And Southington over Staples 13 7. From Class M in the second round, Haddam Killingworth shut out St. Joseph. 3 to nothing. Over to softball now. Class Double L second round, a 3-2 win for West Hill over Ludlow. Darien got a 7-6 win over Bristol Central as Haley King belted in the winning run in the top of the seventh. Cheshire won, Stamford nothing. Middletown over all over Wilton 16-1. And St. Joseph got a 2-0 win over Waterford in Class M. Over to boys lacrosse now. How about Darien? You're almost a sacrificial lamb when you go up against the Blue Wave and Shelton unfortunately was the victim this time. The Blue Wave beat Shelton 22-1 to in Class L. It was Greenwich by one over Glastonbury 12-11. Ridgefield beat Connard 22-2. Staples 9, Trumbull 4, Wilton over NFA 20-2. And it was Ludlow beating Xavier 9-8 in overtime. From Class M, Jackson Apelt scored four times to lead the Rams, who busted out to a 12-1 halftime lead as they knocked off Avon 17-4. The Rams will now play number 9 North Haven on Saturday. From Class S, St. Joseph over Old Lyme 14-11. One score from girls lacrosse, Robin Pelletier and Amanda Lopez scored four times each as St. Joseph beat East Catholic 16-8. From girls tennis, Class L quarterfinals, Staples over New Canaan 4-3, it was Greenwich beating Wilton 5-2, and Amity over Ridgefield 4-3. In boys tennis, for the second consecutive year, the New Canaan Rams have been crowned the kings of Class L. New Canaan's score of 24 points was just two ahead of Daniel Hand's 22, but the Tigers have no singles or doubles matches remaining, thus the Rams win the title. Hand will finish as the runner-up, Darianne and Wilton battling it out for third with 13 points apiece. From 
boys volleyball. It was Trumbull beating Glastonbury 3-2 in Class L. It was Ridgefield 3, Farmington nothing. Staples shut out Shelton 3-0. Southington over Fairfield 3-1 in Class M. New Canaan over Rockville 3-0. To track and field, in Class Double L, the, the Ridgefield Tigers girls outdoor track team finished with 84 points to top runner-up Greenwich, who had 77, and third place Danbury at 76, to earn the program's third state title overall and the first since 1992. The Ridgefield boys team also did well, winning a pair of individual event events and placing third with 57 points behind Danbury and Brian McMahon. The Tigers were the two-time defending state champions. Another big schedule today in the FCAC. We've got the championship in girls golf at Fairchild Wheeler, at, uh, and that is underway, in fact. And the boys get underway at noon with their tee off in boys golf. Uh, and again, that's at Fairchild Wheeler. Softball, Class Double L quarters, Darianne at Southington. West Hill will host Amity. From Class M, it will be St. Joseph hold, hosting. Griswold, not the Griswolds, that would be a whole different movie. On to girls lacrosse, Class L quarterfinals, Glastonbury at Darien, Ridgefield home for Greenwich. We will have that game on the HAN network. Pre-game right around 4.55, but the game time at 5 o'clock at Tiger Hollow. Frank Granito and I will have the call. Wilton at Cheshire, Connor home for Ward. Class M, New Canaan at New Fairfield. Class S, St. Joseph is at Housatonic. Over to boys tennis. It's the divisional championships at Connor. That's at 4 o'clock. Girls tennis, Class L semifinals, Staples at Glastonbury, Greenwich home for Amity, and in boys volleyball, the Class L quarterfinals with Trumbull at East Hartford. So I will go catch my breath, take a lozenge in or two, and be ready for lacrosse. Girls lacrosse, 5 o'clock at Ridgefield High School. Looking forward to it with sports. I'm Rob Adams. Kate, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Rob. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, Deborah Greenwood from the Center for Family Justice will join us coming up on your coffee break after this. Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. Alberta Londano Professional Painting, Wallpapering, and Carpentry has been serving Fairfield County for over 20 years. Based in Norwalk, Alberto takes pride in his work by offering you only the best quality service and products. Call Alberto today to get a free estimate and be one step closer to a new and exciting home makeover. 203-866-9635. Do you need help reaching or maintaining your fitness goals? For over 20 years, Mike Pernice has tailored his time and expertise to clients on both coasts whose schedules demand flexibility and accountability. Mike is a certified lifestyle manager and has been called upon to help his clients eliminate negative behaviors such as coping with stress, improving their time management, setting realistic life goals, and cutting down compulsive behavior. If you're ready to start working toward a more energetic, productive, and healthier you, call Mike Pernice. A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with a Better View, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng, and we're the home team for Nutmeg Sports, Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports, so come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock, Monday through Wednesday, right here on the HAN Network. We're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network, and I'm joined by a special guest, Deborah Greenwood, who's the president and CEO of the Center for Family Justice, a return guest. We always love to have you on, Deb. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for having us back. Now, there's a 
a good event coming up this weekend. Tomorrow, actually, Bowling for Bullying, right? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about this? I sure can. Um, we have now done this about four years in a row, and we do it at Nutmeg Lane in Fairfield. And the purpose of it is to really bowl against bullying so that a lot of families come out, and many children, as we know, or some of the parents when they were kids, have been affected by being bullied at school. And lots of st statistics will show that there is a long-term effect on bullying. So uh, we try to make it a fun event. We um, have a lot of statistics during the event uh, talking about bullying and how many kids um, have actually been affected by it. So we'll be down at Nutmeg Lane from 6 to 9 p.m. And um, there's still plenty of room. So if, if people want to come on down and register, there is room to bowl with a team or come themselves or bring their family. So we'll accommodate. Now, many people may not realize that the Center for Family Justice offers some bullying programs to, to young people. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. One of our biggest programs, um, people know that we do the 24-7 crisis hotline for domestic violence clients as well as those who've been sexually assaulted. And we do a lot with kids who have been um, sexually abused under the age of 18. But prevention is one of our largest programs where we'll go into a school, workplace, talk to PTAs about a variety of topics and um, how to uh, talk to your kids about um, issues of bullying, what to look for if they have been bullied, what does a healthy relationship look like. Uh, so we talk about uh, friendship and peer-to-peer, -peer, um, how we should treat one another, and um, we really have had a great response, and we have a variety of age-appropriate prevention programs from preschool all the way onto our college campuses. And now, so these events are really crucial to helping support the work that you guys do. And I know there's events throughout the year, you put on a lot of great ones, but let's talk just about how important it is to get the support and for people to come out. Um, our first uh, outcome really is the awareness of what we do. And I don't think in the last almost 10 years now that I've been with the Center for Family Justice that we haven't had someone at an event or few, many people come up to either a client, um, I'm sorry, not a client, but a staff person mm. or one of us that says, I think I need to talk to you. Or they might call our 24 seven hotline. So building awareness about what we do do yeah. is really a great outcome of having these um, events around Eastern Fairfield County. So that's number one. Number two, we need to raise money. Mm -hmm. Um, to keep the lights on, uh, we do have paid staff. Um, we're very um, uh, lean and mean. Um, we do uh, at least 4,300 cases of domestic violence every year. We see well over 300 individuals, and these are very low underreported numbers of individuals who've been sexually assaulted. But when we talk about children, we see anywhere from 225 to 250 kids in the six towns we serve that have disclosed a sexual assault, and those interviews are all done at the Center for Family Justice. So prevention is important. Trying to get in front of something, um, whether, again, it's um, at a workplace, uh, in the schools, in the classrooms, um, getting to the parents, getting to the children, so that we can get in front of this, and at some point um, we have started to see our homicides going down in our region. We are seeing um, severe cases not becoming as severe because we now have a um, under one roof type program where someone can come in and get everything they need, whether they want to talk to law enforcement, obviously speaking to one of our client, our advocates that help the clients um, participating in a support group. It's really important that they can get in front of it before it gets to something more severe. And as you mentioned, a lot of sexual violence and domestic violence goes unreported. Uh, yes. So how do we start to change that? Doing what we're doing this morning, mm -hmm. um, really raising the awareness. Um, I can't thank you enough for um, letting us talk about this topic. Uh, again, I go back to 10 years ago. This was a topic no one wanted to discuss. This was a private family matter. Now we hear about it in the media, we read about it in our local newspapers. Um, I can tell you because we have the staff that are dealing with the cases, the hotlines, the safe house that we run. Mm -hmm. So how does it trickle down to the children that live in these households? So we have an opportunity to change the outcome of kids. And that's why a bowling event that we're having tomorrow night can be so crucial, not just because it's fun, not just because we're talking about we shouldn't bully someone, but what the long-term uh, effect will be on someone, whether they become the abuser, which stats have shown mm. if a bully is allowed to continue after the age of 18, 
to have that same behavior. By the time they're 25, these are our future abusers. Wow. So it's really important work. Yeah. Very important. And I know there was another event scheduled for this weekend, but because of weather, might not happen, uh, the Ride Against Child Abuse, which is a great motorcycle event that gets organized. It is. Year. We're um, disappointed. Um, uh, I would say to anyone, just go to our uh, website mm -hmm. to see um, it more than likely will be canceled due to the weather outcome. We want to keep everyone safe out there, but we're not going to completely cancel it. We're hoping in the fall that we'll try once again yes. and hope for uh, better weather conditions. And in the fall, you have another event coming up and a, a special speaker. Yes, scheduled. we do. And actually, um, this is our first uh, announcement in on media that Great. Tuesday, September 27th at the Waterview in Monroe, mm -hmm. uh, we have an incredible venue uh, that's called Speaking of Women. And this will be our 19th year. And our keynote speaker will be Nancy Grace, who we've heard wow. on CNN, who has mm -hmm. written books. Uh, she is a former prosecutor, and she is um, one of our biggest champions in uh, getting um, to those who have abused children. So we're very excited that she has agreed to come to Monroe, Connecticut on Tuesday, September 27th. That's incredible, Nancy Grace, coming to your event. That's wonderful. And again, tell us where we can get more information on these events and if somebody needs help what can they do yes um, if someone's listening uh, what you really need to do is call our 24 7 hotline and the number I'm going to give you rolls right into the hotline um, if you call Monday through Friday 9 to 5 uh, it will certainly get someone immediately but also the 24 7 hotline the number is 203-334-6154 and just hit zero and that will immediately get you access to the help you need. And if you are on a website and you have access to a computer, our website is www.centerforfamilyjustice.org. That's great. Deb, thank you so much. As always, the work you do is just incredible and we so appreciate it. Thank you, Kate. Thank All you right. for the awareness today. Thank you so much. All right, well, we are gonna take a break. When we come back, John Kovach joins me and we're gonna take a look at the front pages of our HAN newspapers this week coming up after this. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizzik. At the Language School in Ridgefield, we teach practical language for real life, tailored to your professional needs or those of your children. Offering more than a dozen languages, the school specializes in creating customized classes for businesses, government agencies, and healthcare professionals in Fairfield and Westchester counties. Native speakers from around the world will instruct students of all ages in the language and the culture using a hands-on method. Find out more about what makes us different at thelanguageschoolglobal.com or call us at 203-241-7010. Warm weather, light breezes, boats are in the water. There's no better place to celebrate summer than the dock shop. Whether in Darien at 51 Tokenik Road or Westport at 609 Riverside Avenue, the dock shop is where you'll find everything you need to kick off summer. From the latest summer apparel to the newest fishing tackle, the Dock Shop will help you get the most out of your next beach day or harbor cruise. At the Dock Shop, you'll find a wonderful selection of items made in the USA and right here in New England, all with a distinct nautical flair. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the coastal lifestyle, this is a unique place to shop. DockShop.com 
And we're back on your coffee break. And since it's Thursday, of course, John Kovach, our editorial director, joins me to take a look at some of our front pages this week. Of course, it's a big day. All our papers are out, so you can grab those. Big day, and Monday was to be a big day for a lot of our papers. Yeah. And then with parades falling victim to the weather, you had a lot of people scrambling to uh, fill front pages because the Memorial Day parade that one of my favorite issues of the year because of the artwork. And all the wonderful artwork in it. And, you know, it's a short week, so we usually need those photos. But everyone that made too. it work. <laughs> that, too. So where are you starting, Kate? So I'm uh, taking a look at Ridgefield and, of course, some Memorial Day coverage and talking about the tough call of canceling the parade, but some other services and events that were held to honor veterans, um, including these Girl Scouts who were selling dog bandanas to benefit pets for vets on Main Street. Oh, that's Street. awesome. I love that. That's a great cause. And some other news in Richfield, the Little League there planning a Route 7 ball field. I know that uh, ball fields are always an issue in most towns. There's never enough to go around with so mm -hmm. many groups using them. So they're working on a new one. And the long, empty Schlumberger property uh, now being eyed as a potential cultural center and some building rentals. So we'll see what happens with that. Just down Route 7 in Wilton, the parade was canceled, but they went through with the ceremony. A nice photo of the uh, honor guard there and of the speaker whose speech appears in its entirety inside today's Wilton Bulletin. And two stories related to the economy in town. One, just a look at the economy in Wilton. And news that Blue Buffalo, the all-natural pet food maker, is expanding, adding a plant in Indiana. Also, an interesting feature on interns and where the college students who have come home are gaining that real-life experience, like so many are here at the HAN Network. Right. Well, I'm taking a look at the front page of the Weston Forum. Of course, there's a lot of red, white, and blue on our front pages this week, as we mentioned. Uh, but in news, a plan canceled to buy 48 Norfield Road in Weston. The town was going to buy that. It was a potential spot. Uh, for some renovations for the police station there, but that is not happening right now. And a Weston sculptor, her pieces are being featured at Prospect Park in Brooklyn. So very cool. Very cool story there. In Easton, the emergency medical services there celebrating its 70th anniversary. Also celebrating the repeat champions, the Joel Barlow girls lacrosse team. Uh, also taking a look at uh, community assets network there and a story we've followed on Yankee Fisherman which is coming up at one and that is the future of the South Park property in Easton and I've heard this bandied around a little bit in private conversations and it's just good to see it finally in the news the potential of a nature center at that site that abuts the Mill River very cool. All right. Well, I'm taking a look at the front page of the Darien Times. The Planning and Zoning Commission, they're reviewing some changes for redevelopment in the Neroten Heights area. So that is going on. And I love this front page story. This is actually by a uh, high school reporter, a history behind Darien's elementary schools and the strange names that they have. Oh, I've got to read that. So that's very cool. I'm going to have to read that one, too. And, of course, uh, big front page news, history at the Harbor. Darien won its first FCAC championship in 35 years at Harbor Yard in Bridgeport. Of course, we were there. That game you can watch on demand at HAN.network. Epic game that that was. Milford had its parade, and uh, I know Darien, they had the bagpipers, one of the uniforms that I like, the Revolutionary War uniforms in evidence there in Milford. Also, the naming of a new director of the Milford Chamber of Commerce, the annual closing of Charles Island to protect nesting shorebirds. And as an Eagle Scout project, Nick Foss has restored a gazebo at the Milford boat ramp, and that has been dedicated to veterans. So nice job there by Nick Foss in Milford. All right, taking a look at the front page of the Lewisboro Ledger. A uh, cute picture of some kids playing uh, at the Memorial Day Fair in South Salem on May 30th. And a muscular dystrophy fundraiser hosted by the Captain Lawrence Brewery coming up. That's going to be on June 4th. And then a very cool feature story on a Lewisboro student uh, who is recently became the first hearing impaired person to ever become a 46er, an achievement he completed at 14 with his older sister Alexis. So very cool there. Trumbull went through with its Memorial Day festivities, honoring those who 
paid the ultimate price and just a great photo of the Grand Marshal and that's Captain James V. Morgia who known for his singing and this after a rendition of God Bless America. Also they are looking at uh, architects for the Senior Community Center Building Committee in Trumbull mm -hmm. and discussing that continues even as they look at design as they are more than 500 signatures opposed to it yeah. that have been collected. Yeah, that's become quite a controversial topic there. I know there's a, a lot of discussion online about that. All right, well, taking a look at the new Canaan Advertiser, a story we were talking about this week, my favorite photo of the week, the bear hiding in the tree. <laughs> well, I think he's hiding, but he just crawled up. He was chased up by police officers. He was on Owen Oak Lane, very close to the downtown very. area. So there was some concern there, but they decided to let him come down on his own. And so far, he has not been sighted again near the downtown area. So I think he made his way back into the woods. May have been just a little too much commotion and being down now, <laughs> downtown New Canaan, he probably could not find a place to park. Yes. And uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Christopher Cogswell, a New Canaan High graduate, was honored by the town as Grand Marshal and led the Memorial Day Parade on Monday, which I know was shortened but still happened. And uh, also something we talked about on CT Pulse yesterday, Michael Katarivas talked to Jim Himes uh, about his feelings on Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. So interesting uh, feedback there. In Monroe, uh, they had the parade uh, actually under sun because they had it Sunday. <laughs> there you go. That's why they have sunny parade pictures and a story that crosses the border into Trumbull and that is this discussion where Trumbull is saying well we can move to court to Monroe and Monroe is kind of like really? <laughs> might, might be up for discussion there and then you just had Deb Greenwood of the Center for Family Justice on and discussing bowling against bullying. Yeah great event people can still take part in that that's tomorrow. And a uh, Reading pilot. All right. Well, Reading Trail is much more than a place for bird watching. So an in-depth story on some of the great trails offered in Reading. It is beautiful there. But some road closures there may have a big impact this summer. Route 53 will close just after the intersection with Umpawag Road. That bridge will be repaired, and it could cause some major traffic congestion there. But in some better news, June 12th, Georgetown Day returns. I know that's a big a community event that everybody enjoys. Big news in Shelton, and much of it late-breaking, the continuing debate over the Shelter Ridge condo got a little heated there and the news that the Conklin family will receive a diploma for their late son Ed at Shelton High School's graduation. The Shelton Derby Parade was held. Some great pictures of that as well that in this week's Shelton Herald. All right well taking a look at the front page of the Stratford Star. The Board of Education turning over the former center school to the town uh, so now the town will decide the future of that school. And of course, Second Hill Lane Elementary School students demonstrated their pride in patriotism with a special assembly and a great banner, just all those hands, very cool there. Uh, all the schools in Stratford always do a great job for Memorial Day. Obviously, Eli Whitney is the one that everyone notices with all the beautiful the poppies the and poppies flags. The poppies and the flags. Yeah. I've, I've shot that and it's very moving to see that. It's beautiful every year. So Kate, have you ever wanted to be a producer? Uh, yes. On Broadway, I am sometimes. No, you are no, sometimes. That, That's no. true. <laughs> but in uh, our arts and leisure, they take a look at John Braglio's new book, which details how to be a producer, and that gives a rundown of all of the events in the area That's this weekend. Great. All right. Well, Yankee Fisherman's coming up at one o'clock today. Annual focus on boating safety. I like to do that. Um, we spent a ton of time at the Fairfield Police Safe Boating Day a couple weeks ago, and we're going to talk to them about the equipment that you need, the courses and the certifications that you need. Uh, it, it really an enlightening day all about how to stay safe when you're out on the water. All right, great. So that's coming up at 1, and HAN Arts and Leisure coming up at 2, so be sure to check that out. And, of course, 5 o'clock, Girls Lacrosse in Greenwich. Watch it live on the HAN Network. We'll see you tomorrow for your coffee break. I don't know.